If you want to know why I look crazy and like I have been crying, it's because I have. And you can find out why <laughs> in my last video if you haven't seen it. But I just want to jump right into some helpful content for those of us that are childcare providers that are still pushing and still open and want to find a way to continue providing high quality childcare during these crazy times. If you're new here, my name is Danny Christine. I'm a childcare business owner, consultant, and wannabe lifestyle content creator here on YouTube. And you could really help me out with that by scrolling down and clicking that subscribe button to join the Danny Christine click. My last couple of videos have really been primarily about what is going on in the world today with this novel coronavirus and how we are handling it as child care providers. My program is located in New York where there is currently an outrageous, the most number of confirmed cases within the United States. But I know that there are other clusters of, of towns and cities within the country that are really suffering pretty bad as well. So if your program is heavily impacted, which I'm sure we all fall into that category, whether there's been a confirmed case in your program or in your community or not, we're all heavily impacted at this point. Today is Wednesday, March, Jesus, no, it is it is Thursday, March 26, as I film this. Um, so to my knowledge, the whole world is heavily impacted. But we got to make sure that our essential workers like first responders, healthcare professionals, grocery store clerks, pharmacists, all the people that are needed to make sure other people can continue surviving, those life-sustaining businesses, <laughs> They need childcare workers to be able to provide safe, quality, healthy childcare for their kids if they cannot keep them at home. That's why I'm open in short for anybody that might have a question about it. Many childcare programs that were not mandated to close by their state or governing body are still choosing to remain open because child care is considered an essential service. There are certain things that we do need to do as child care providers to make sure that we maintain the health and safety of the children and employees within our facilities. And if you have a home daycare, this can apply to you just as well. I had a home daycare so I know for sure that most of the things that I'm about to say we can do in home daycare settings as well and we absolutely should. So here are some new procedures that we have recently implemented in my program that you might want to consider implementing in yours. The first is curbside pickups. So we have assigned one or two of our employees to be the designated curbside runner as we call them and we do pick up and drop off outside of the building so before we used to let our parents come into the building with their children and just go straight into the classrooms that their child belongs in and we do have a front desk person there's always someone at the front desk the all exterior doors automatically lock so in order for anyone to get into the building they do have to be identified first by our front desk person and then buzzed in and then signed in and they go to their classrooms it is normally a very safe structured procedure but at this time it is not the healthiest procedure to prevent the spread of this virus so we are eliminating all people from entering the building other than employees and children and authoritative figures like licensing if they need it to come which our licensing office is closed and working remotely so they're really not coming unless it's an emergency or like the police or first responders or something those are the only people that we would allow to enter the building until further notice so our curbside runners go outside with gloves on, 
um, hand sanitizer in hand and ready to accept children. Before the child enters the program, we conduct a daily health check. This is something that we are regulated and mandated to do anyway on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just that we are going above and beyond with our health checks at this point. We're also doing temperature reads of each child every time they arrive to the facility. So they are not permitted to come inside if they are experiencing or demonstrating any symptoms of COVID-19 or even if they're not coughing or have any shortness of breath we're not allowing any child to come in with a fever which is why we have the the thermometer to check their temperature also a side note this is a forehead thermometer um, that we disinfect after every use we're not using any like ear thermometers or um, oral temperature readings it's a forehead thermometer and we're also waiting on a delivery of a no contact laser like thermal thermometer so we can be even more um, cautious the thermometer and temperature checks are not just for children we're also doing that for our staff every morning that the staff comes in we're checking their temperature if they have a fever they cannot stay if they are displaying any coronavirus symptoms they cannot stay um, and on top of that they must come back with a doctor's note clearing them to come back to work so we are just much more strict with our illness policy and at this time no one with any coronavirus symptoms are able to stay on site and in general we're trying to enforce a no visitors policy so this means no tours any parents that are interested in childcare at this time we're trying to put together like a virtual video tour of our program so that um, they can see what we have going on inside but in general we're pretty good about keeping our social media updated our website is great there's tons of pictures tons of videos already um, just online and easily accessible we're also very highly rated in our area in comparison to other daycare programs surrounding us um, we are a five-star program and we're very proud of that so it's a bit easier for us to say no tours at this time but if you don't really have that much of an online presence in your program i would highly suggest that you quickly put together like a video tour just you know walking through each of your classrooms or throughout your home the areas that you provide care and showing off what is so great about your program you can do this with children in the presence if you have those photo release um, forms from parents or if you do not have parents permission you can just do it after all the kids are gone um, and if you want to in the video you can explain that this virtual tour is for the purpose of maintaining the health and safety of everyone in the building as you are not accepting visitors to tour the program at this time on top of that we are hand washing as soon as we come into the building if the staff has to leave for lunch or leave for any reason and when they come back they must wash their hands and we are also washing hands every 90 minutes i had witnessed one of my administrators literally paging all of our classrooms because we have like an intercom system and i guess she set up an alarm on her phone and chose to page every classroom every 90 minutes and say it's time to wash hands um so every 90 minutes the children and staff are washing their hands also in alignment with cdc guidelines we have chosen to uh, reduce our class sizes so normally in some of our classes we could have up to 21 children at one time uh, now we are limiting our class sizes until further notice um, to no more than 10 children maximum and to be honest our attendance every day is so low so it just turns out that way anyway where we're really not even seeing enough children to go past 10 kids per class 
um, so it, it works out fine at the moment anyway. Now if a child does develop symptoms or become sick while in our care, then we have procedures in place to isolate that child from the rest of the children um, under supervision of course. A floater teacher or an administrator would stay in that classroom with a child or that area or office um, with the child who is sick. We have masks available on site for anybody that becomes sick and parents will be called and the child will be sent home. It has been made clear that in our area if anyone was to test positive that is associated with or known to come into our building like a child or a teacher, we will be notified by the Department of Health, by our local Department of Health. I made it a point to call the Department of Health myself this morning because I wanted to be prepared for what the protocol would be after that if we were to find out that someone tests positive. There's already just so much general uncertainty. That's what we keep seeing, right? In this, these times of uncertainty or these unprecedented times, um, I needed to be certain about something. And that something was what is gonna happen if somebody does test positive? What is the protocol? And keep in mind, I don't know if I said earlier in this video, but my program is located in New York. When I called the Department of Health, they straight up told me that this is somewhat of the new normal for the time being and we have to do our best to just keep it at bay. That was what was told to me. Um, and they explained that I we would not be required to close for any specific period of time. It would really depend on the symptoms of the child or teacher or person, I assume they meant, how long the person had symptoms for, where they were, who they could have exposed. There's a couple different factors and I was directed to follow the child care program guidance on the CDC website, which I didn't know um, existed. I didn't know there was a designated uh, tab on the CDC website for child care programs so I did look into that. They do have a great chart outlining the different possibilities and outcomes and things like that and what you should do in certain scenarios and it mentioned closing from anywhere between two to five days. So we have plans outlined for that. We also have a large percentage of our currently enrolled students about 75 to 80 percent of them that are social distancing at home their parents are choosing to keep them home or the parents aren't working right now so they're not coming to our program so it's important that we stay connected with them so that those parents can remember how great of a program we are for however long this lasts and that they return to us when all of this calms down so we have implemented a distance learning format of some sorts on our website where our teachers are supplying me with curriculum information, lessons, activities, coloring pages, worksheets, all of those things we have uploaded to a special designated page on our website that we have blasted out to our families and that I want to build out a little more and then blast it out to all of our hundreds of leads, which are prospective families, that I have um, gathered their email and phone numbers and contact information into our CRM platform. If you are interested in learning how to market your child care program in general, I do have a video on, on that and you can click up here to find out more information about it but we have a list of like hundreds of people that were in need of child care over the years that I want to advertise this to because I'm sure many of their children are also staying home and those kids need something to do and those families are going to need child care after this and we want to be on the top of their list. 
And with that said, we are also planning to implement virtual classes, which is most likely going to be more of a subscription based model of teaching of like a live class or something um, that we're going to build out. And once I figure all of that out and put it into place, I will come back here with more information to share with you guys in case you are interested in doing that in your program as well. This is what we have going on so far and I'm sure things are going to change and we're taking it day by day to be honest. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Danny Christine Consulting and at Child Care Sites. And if you are interested in starting up a child care program or improving yours, then I would encourage you to go to childcaresites.com. I have a few low cost child care courses that I launched two weeks ago. Was it last? Honestly, time feels like it's flying and crawling at the same time, if that makes sense. But recently, I launched a couple of low cost video courses for child care providers. I do plan on continuing that. But with the severity of this coronavirus situation that did get put on pause but more are coming i also have a few previously recorded videos from like months ago that i do want to just upload here to youtube and it might seem some of the topics might seem a bit strange or like irrelevant during these times but I do think that I know that we are going to overcome this situation and eventually the information I shared in those videos will be useful at some point if not right now. What are you doing in your program? I would love to know. Leave it in the comments below and thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.